Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Charlie and I am a UX design lead and today we are going to be updating my UX portfolio. You make me wanna be with somebody Doing things that I usually don't Find my way through the hotel lab Make the same when I'm on and I own Before we get started, I wanted to mention the tools that I use in order to build, design, and host my UX portfolio online. So to start off, when it comes to design, I don't think this is coming as a surprise to anyone who has been on my channel before, but I do all of my design work in Figma. That's the tool that I use for work, the tool I use for my freelancing jobs, but I just, I use Figma. It works perfectly for me and it's free to use for a personal plan. So I do all of my design work for my UX portfolio in there. Then when it comes to actually building the portfolio, I have a background in computer science and software development. So I was really easily able to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to code my portfolio on my own. And that's just how I ended up building it. When it comes to where I write that code, I use something called Visual Studio Code, which is also free and that just has all of my code in there and lets me preview it before I put it online for the rest of the world to see. My code online is on something called GitHub, which is a repository. So it's like where you store all of your code and GitHub also happens to be free. I've been using GitHub since I was in computer science. So I think it's been like, I don't know, maybe like a decade ago, <laughs> I think is how long I've been using GitHub and it just works perfectly for that. And finally, when it comes to hosting, I use a platform called Netlify and I have been using Netlify for about six years so far and it's just worked exactly as I needed it to. It is very easy to use. If, I, if you had to think about the internet as like earth, then, <laughs> Netlify gives my little code or like my little UX portfolio a little piece of land so that it can live and exist. And to just kind of stick with that analogy, you also need an address so that other people can find it. And in cases of the internet, your address is your URL or your domain. And I buy my URL from Google domain and that costs me $17 annually in order to just own it and keep it for my portfolio and keep it for my own use. So with all of those tools, Figma, Visual Studio Code, um, GitHub, and Netlify, and my Google domain, the only one that I actually pay for is my Google domain. So my entire cost for my portfolio annually is $17 Canadian. And that's if you excuse the amount of money that I spent on my computer science degree. So. Yeah, so I like to plan out my year and quarters and in every quarter I have a little update portfolio task where I write down any of the changes or improvements I want to make and I've just found that since I started doing it, I it's just like really worked out well for me. I think my biggest problem before I started doing this was that I would just be in this constant cycle of designing and redesigning my portfolio. Like I would design something that I really loved in Figma and then as I started to implement it, it would just take a really, really long time. And I just ended up kind of getting over it around like halfway through and my eyes would start to wander and I would look at other portfolio website designs and I'd be like, oh, I like that so much more or I like this so much more. And then I would just end up not finishing my portfolio and changing my design again and having to basically start again from zero. So doing that, it really just wasted a lot of my own time and I most likely lost a lot of opportunities for freelancing or for just any other client work because my portfolio was always in this like under construction or half finished kind of state. And I know I definitely lost a lot of time or like wasted time doing this because really a portfolio is just a space for you to show off your case studies. Like those should be the main focus and really the whole reason why you have a portfolio in the first place. And by just constantly redesigning it, I could have spent that time better. I could have made my case studies better or I could have practiced my UI skills, improved my facilitation skills or anything like that. So I wanna show you guys my current portfolio and how I got away from that designing and redesigning cycle. All right, so I'm in Figma right now and I'm gonna show you guys my previous UX portfolio before I decided to implement this whole phased out strategy and just like a couple of mistakes that I made very early on that I just want to tell you guys about. So hopefully you guys don't make the same one. But here was my portfolio back in August of 2021, which is right before I started implementing this method. And as you can see from the portfolio, 
it's really, really simple. Like I tried to do the very least that I could in order to just get something out there and make sure that I had something online so that I can show potential employers or future clients or anything like that. And I ended up just like, choosing to move away from this portfolio because I really didn't like it. I didn't feel like it showed off my skills as a UI designer and it wasn't like a very good foot to put forward when it came to looking for other jobs and other opportunities. So my whole idea was to redesign this into something that could help me get, get jobs. So here is my next design that I came up with and why it was such a huge mistake. So this next design is incredibly branded and even looking at this now i still really love it like i love the colors i love the shapes i love the playfulness of the portfolio and there's definitely a lot of time and effort spent adding all these icons thinking of the layout like different shapes and designs and just like overall it's a very cohesive and strong like visual identity and branding image. However, when it came to me actually implementing this and putting in my case studies, it just looked so weird. Like my case studies did not at all look like they belonged on this portfolio. And the reason this happened was because it was just so over designed that it overpowered my case studies when it really should have been the other way around. A UX portfolio is something that acts as a canvas to your case studies. They should be able to, to pop, to stand out on their own. And with just how complex and I'm gonna keep saying branded, but like really just like colorful and branded my portfolio was designed to look like, my key studies just didn't belong there and I didn't end up getting very far. I pretty, I'm pretty sure I only like did these two pages and that was kind of when I knew like, hey, this isn't going to work out and I need to think of something new. Now, when it came to my next try in order to come up with a portfolio design, I knew I still really loved what I had created before, but I also knew that I needed to tone it back a bit in order to get something that would be workable and would make my case studies really stand out. So I'm going to show you what my current portfolio looks like. And it's basically the same thing as what we had above, except I removed a lot of that extra style. A lot of those like interestingly shaped bubbles and circles are gone. The colors are a lot more like toned down and neutral. And the font is more, I would say like web friendly and readable instead of more heavily branded. And this is what I came up with so far with my current portfolio that I wanted to aim towards. So I still had a lot of the content that I wanted to, but when I put in my case studies, they didn't look so out of place and they really like ended up standing out to my, to my portfolio and they really just like held their own and drew your attention to them. However, I knew that if I were to just jump straight into implementing out this portfolio exactly how I designed it now on Figma, I knew it was just gonna take a lot of time and I was once again going to get kind of tired of it and start looking at other designs and wanting to incorporate them and then I'll be stuck right back in that cycle. So instead, I started to think about it much more like an actual like coding or project that you would have. And in those projects, you usually develop something in phases. The first phase that you would create is something called an MVP, which is a minimum viable product. It's something that just has the bare bones, but at least you can put it out there and let users use it or let other people, external like clients view it. And that's kind of the idea that I had going forward with my portfolio. The goal for me when it came to implementing these phases was to make sure that I never counting myself out of like finding more freelancing opportunities or like other jobs or opportunities. And I just knew that the big thing for me was to make sure I would have a portfolio that I was proud of online as close to 100% of the time as possible. So that's what I tried to do with these phases. So for my phase one, I'll show you guys what that looks like right away. But here was phase one. And I think I did this maybe like 
second quarter 2021 or maybe even third i can't remember exactly but here was my phase one which is very very close to what i had in my original design however i just meant, made sure that i kept only the pages and the content that i would absolutely need in order to make sure that i had something to put online and with this phase one it really just took away a lot of that extra work for me while also making sure that i had a really nice looking portfolio that i could be proud of so i managed to accomplish this phase one and then I moved on to phase two which it got a little bit more complicated I added a few more elements like if just you know a little bit of extra stuff I was thinking about doing a podcast but that kind of just didn't end up happening and added some more like elements to that then I also just kept going with it and I made like a phase three here I made a phase four and currently I'm on phase six and I'm still in love with what I created at the very beginning. I still really like it and I'm not tired of it. And even if there are some changes or deviations to their original design, they're not like absolutely groundbreaking where I would just feel like I need to scrap everything that I already made. And doing that, my portfolio has been online and ready for future employers or other opportunities to view pretty much with zero downtime since I started. And I've been able to spend all the time that I would have dedicated to working on my UX portfolio, working on my case studies, leveling up all my skills, having more work-life balance, and just enjoying <laughs> enjoying that more. So for my phase six of updating my portfolio, which is what we're doing in this quarter, it's a bunch of really small changes to just make sure I do a little bit of house cleaning. When it comes to bigger things like updating and creating a new UX portfolio, that's for next quarter for me to worry about. But this quarter, I just wanted to work on a few things like updating my social media links. I did end up changing my IG handle from charlie.ux to my full name, Charlie Chung, just to keep it all consistent. Along with updating my social links, I also have a new one that I wanted to add in there for my Etsy shop. So my shop, Shop Charlie, is where I sell my UX career template for Notion. It is modeled exactly exactly after what I personally use to track my career and make sure I'm just progressing properly. I made a whole video about that last year so I will put a link in the description and also in the card up here so that you guys can view it. But yeah, you guys have been showing that one a lot of love. So I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who have already purchased it. I really hope it's helping you guys out with your career in UX. Next, I also have to update my year for my portfolio. I need to update it to 2023, which is a really simple change. And you see this little icon that I have at the very top with my profile picture. This I think should really be a link for the user to get back to the home page and I just wanted to add in that and make sure users can do that. There's also a few pieces of content that I wanted to update and I feel like I can just write it better to reflect who I am as a designer this year and to do that I really want to take advantage of the new AI tools that we have out like ChatGPT so that we can hopefully have this written out in a much better way without you know spending too much time on it and being able to work on other things. Next is a pretty small change where I just want to add an arrow to the corner images of my case study titles. Whenever you click on one of these, it actually takes you to a new tab which has the case study opened, but I just don't think that's very obvious. So I'm going to see if that little arrow in the very corner makes it more obvious for users and potential readers. And finally, I also wanted to update some of the images that I have on my portfolio on the home screen. So for my UX portfolio, personally, I really enjoy UI design. And when it comes to freelancing clients and things, I really just want to make sure that I can highlight those skills appropriately, which is why I have these one, two, three, six images showing off my UI skills. And this was done so that I didn't just have to rely on what I did in my actual work in my like case studies, but I can also show some like really eye-catching, colorful, aesthetic visuals right off the bat to any potential readers or employers so they would know that my UI skills are quite decent. Um, I would say. And each of these images also reflects the type of industry that I am most comfortable working in or the kind of skills I'm more, um, I feel like I'm stronger in. So the first one is obviously like design systems, UI kits. I make a lot of design systems and I've always done that for any of the jobs that I'm in and I feel very comfortable doing that and I also want to promote that skill. Next is working in fintech, finances, anything like that. Consulting in digital media or in software is also something I'm comfortable with. I also have an image for mobile design just so users know that I 
can do that as well and I'm not just limited to web apps or um, like yeah desktop applications now when it comes to the things that I want to do here I actually want to replace these two images that I have in the very bottom left hand side because and this is just a mistake that I kind of like it was an oversight for me I was just really into creating more things around this point so I ended up making these but they're not something that I actually want to do for work and those are branding and vector illustrations. While I do like doing those on the side, it's much more of like a for fun thing and it's not really something that in my opinion a UX designer should be doing for their company and I also don't just want to promote that I do that in case I have to set my boundaries in that. But yeah, there's no real like point I would say to showing off branding and vector illustration on my UX portfolio, especially on the front page if they're not skills that I intend to be using in a UX design role, especially like as I'm now in a lead UX design role and like as I keep progressing on in my career. So I'm definitely going to have to replace these two images. Not really sure what they're going to be replaced with yet and if I'll get to them for the, today, but I will definitely let you guys know and if you want to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok then I am sure you guys will see what I come up with there. So now that all these changes are done I'm just going to push my code up live so that it is viewable and ready to go but I think that's it like I think I'm just going to call it here. I'm really happy with the changes that we made for this phase in my portfolio and just thinking about next phase the big goal there is to write a new case study and post it online and I really want to take you guys along on that journey so you can see the whole like well just how different the process is when it comes to what we did for this cycle and then moving on to our next phase where I want to show you guys how I strategize and plan and write and design all of like what's needed for our UX portfolio before it actually for a UX case study before it actually goes up live. So I think that will be a really exciting video. But until then, we're, we're at the end of this one and I just wanna say a huge thank you for sticking with me and working with me today on getting this all updated. Huge thank you as always for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. No, no, used to be each other's best friends, yeah.